Okay. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Christopher. And for my topic regarding Japanese culture, I wanted to explore Japanese architecture. So, why Japanese architecture? So, architectural styles can show how culture affected the way buildings looked. And as we all know, architecture is usually unique to the region. And in this case, it's unique to the country of Japan. Uh, so what are some observations on these architectural styles? So the materials of buildings are very prevalently made out of wood. And we can see that frames fit together like a puzzle interlocked, which corresponds to the word Tokyo. So focusing on the exterior aspects of buildings. So outside flooring, um, well, we can easily see this in many buildings that we come across in Japan. Uh, the veranda or edge sides are called engao and allow for walkways uh, and they act as an extension of the building. Also, it is very important to note, there are four different types of roofs in Japanese architecture or four common ones, might I say. There are gables, which are kirizuma, hip gables, irimoya, hip roof, yosemune, and square pyramids, hogyo jukuri. Um, these different types of roofs are used for different types of buildings, um, depending on um, religious or just residential areas, or if they're inspired on certain styles. Um, of course, they will be mirrored on buildings that are wanting to replicate these types of roof styles. Uh, next is the interior. So um, a very common piece of architecture that is well seen around the world, uh, specific, specifically in Japan, is called a genkan or the entryway area. So these areas are used for putting shoes on to the floor as you usually take your shoes off when you enter a building. Um, this has actually spread out further than Japan. I've seen some houses here in Daly City um, that have Genkan entryway areas for shoes to be placed, uh, probably because of the strong Asian influence in the city itself. Uh, interior flooring, um, usually we have what we call tatami, which are floor mats that are placed. Um, and I think, I'm pretty sure that they do this because usually you sit on the floor and there are not really many chairs or couches seen in traditional Japanese architecture. And so floor mats are a way for not only the person, the owner of the house to express themselves creatively, but also to have a comfortable living space. Uh, as you can see, this, uh, person, I think this is a child actually, but sitting on the floor mat, um, and that just shows why they choose floor mats instead of, say, carpet or hardwood floors, just like we do in the United States. Um, different types of doors. So there are movable, movable screens, shoji, and sliding doors, fusuma. So what does this say? Um, we don't see this a lot in Western culture. Uh, in Japan, uh, a lot of the walls are made out of paper mats and they are able to be moved uh, easily. Um, so this allows families to easily interact with each other and hear each other. And I think that just shows how the culture in Japan is much different because they might value their families and the accompaniment of the families more than let's say in the US where we have thick walls that we can't move, we can't really hear out of the other side. And that just shows the difference between the family values of both countries and specifically more Japan. And one of the last aspects that I like to focus on is nature. So as we can see, a lot of Japanese architecture is based around its environment and nature. And that's one of the few things that I really enjoy about Japanese architecture is that they build within nature instead of just 
trying to take all of it down, cut down the trees and, and dam the rivers. They build within nature, and I have a very big respect for that. And culturally, that just shows how valuable nature was to the Japanese um, in comparison to other regions of the world, like in the United States, where in the United States, let's be honest, if we're looking at any of these areas, it would probably be probably be changed to cement there wouldn't be much as many trees as there were before uh, and so i just highly respect the idea of valuing nature and instead of overrunning it trying to coexist with it so some more cultural implications um, as we can see from the earlier slides there are simple materials and that leads me to believe in the minimalist mindset that the Japanese people are usually accompanied with. Very simple, but still very complex, um, which is a mirror to the haiku. Uh, so of course, we all know the haiku structure is very predictable, but the content within is can offer complexity and new perspectives. And so that's what I like to think about in Japanese architecture. This also showed how much nature was valued. The buildings aren't too flashy to distract it from its surroundings. So as we can see in the earlier slides, uh, let's say this third picture, I, this third picture would be the most, I guess, flashy out of the other two, probably because of the red color. Um, it's a lot different. It contrasts with the background, but it doesn't exactly, it's still, feels like it belongs there, right? It's the materials, it's not metal or titanium or, or steel, it's wood. It still feels very natural. It's still like, it takes some attention, but it shows the beauty of the surroundings of itself, which is very important for Japanese architecture. And many buildings were inspired by styles of shrines and temples, which shows how important religion was. And so we can see here um, a very similar like to a shrine uh, with the roof being shaped in the manner that it is and the buildings. Uh, I think it's just very respectable that not only were they able to express themselves architecturally, but also pay homage to religious and naturalistic values that they had. I think that is very impressive. Uh, of course, there are a lot more other topics when it comes to Japanese architecture that I did not touch on. Um, as we know, there are different periods and eras that could have, could have influenced architecture. Um, but I chose to focus mainly on, I believe this, this was the Edo period, um, which I showcased here. Uh, I believe that it was the most significant in development of architecture and where the theme of simple yet beautiful comes into play. And that is my presentation. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed.